Good morning, everyone. I trust you had a nice Easter. Yeah, plenty to eat, fun things to do. A couple things uh, to go over with you. Uh, you know, Debbie, uh, her last day was last week, last Thursday. We've interviewed quite a few people, and we have our, don't be nasty. <laughs> people might clap when you leave. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we have hired a young lady. Her name is Tammy Martin. Tammy comes to us with about 12 years of experience in this industry here. She is currently the community manager over at one of the properties here in town. So she has about nine or 10 years of office experience plus community manager experience. So I hopefully she will be a good fit for our company here. You know where Crystal Lake is? Well, that's where she's at right now. She's a community manager over there. So she'll be coming on board on the 2nd of May. So I'll bring her up and introduce her and let you get to know her a little bit. On, also on the 2nd of May, we're still going up to Orlando and pick up and uh, the award for you guys. There will be a three or four or five of us going up there and uh, it'll be nice and so I'm sure that some of the people who are involved with uh, TMAC and some of the events and all the coordinators and Janet will be up there to accept the award for your community service and we'll see if we win for overall. They'll announce that night at the uh, little dinner who the overall winner. Again, we're in the top f uh, six finalists at this point right here for you guys. Next thing we're working on, the someone asked last week about the paving out here where all the cones are. Well, they're supposed to be here Wednesday, this Wednesday, and pave all the areas where you have cones at. We'll see. Uh, they've told us this before in the past, but they were supposed to be here last Friday. Apparently, they forgot it was Good Friday, and the asphalt plants don't run on Good Friday. So uh, we'll see about this Wednesday. And the last thing I have for you is we are uh, pouring concrete this morning around 845 on the, in the dog park area. We are starting the construction part of the, there's a big five foot wide, about four inches thick piece of concrete that's gonna be poured 117 feet long, which you can uh, walk or drive back to the dog lot. Also inside the dog lot they're pouring, they're building a shed or a shelter for you. It's gonna be a 10 by 20 shelter and they should be pouring that concrete also here shortly this morning. So that's all I have for you as far as what we're going to be doing, typical cleaning uh, around the community here, uh, trimming hedges, things like that. We'll continue uh, this week mowing. But any, since we've got a few minutes, right, any questions, concerns, complaints, we'll open up and see if you have anything you want to talk about. Raise your hand, we've got a mic ready for you. No one? Come on, I'm sure somebody, there we go, right up front here. Thank you. Right behind you is a microphone. When are the hedges going to be clipped as you're going out on to Schumacher, the big high ones? On the right and hand side? also by Ann Hudson's house. Well, I'm sorry, I don't know Ann Hudson's house, but Give me a little bit better. Where, where is that at? Carefree Parkway. We have, I, all I can tell you is this right here. Last week they worked around the pool area trimming all the hedges there. And uh, we have two people on the hedge trimming right now. They'll be doing that for the next probably two weeks. So I can't give you an exact time, but they'll be going through the entire community again trimming hedges. We do this about once every 90 days. Uh, of course, we constantly are trimming hedges, but we do a, a big cut usually about every 90 days. So I don't, I don't have an exact answer for that, but hopefully it will be within the next week or so. A question, we were going to have, are they grass carps or something like that, um, that um, we're going to go into the ponds to heap, eat the grass? Right. Well, you're going to see the ponds start to look a little better. We're having them treated an additional time this month. Also, the carp, uh, according to Gary, probably will be in the next 30 days. You just can't buy those at any time, so that's the issue. We have to go up to the northern part of Florida now to pick those up. Then you have issues that we're learning from the agriculture department. When you take fish and you transport them, 
you know, one or two degree difference in the temperature in the water can kill the fish. So we have to be very careful where and when we buy them and how we transport those to get them back to the pond. Those are approximately $20 a piece. They're special bred fish for just that. So we're gonna buy about 25. That's what our permit allows us to do. And then they will meet us down here because you just don't come dump them in the ponds. You got, they have to, uh, figure out there's a calculation that they work off of so many acres per fish things like that so it's still in the works but yeah, that's a little more scientific than I thought it was just to go buy the fish and bring them down here more to it than that when will you continue the house inspections that's also an ongoing process there's so many houses in here we can't just go it, it takes longer than a couple of weeks to go around and do the inspections on these to do it properly, so we're constantly doing house inspections. If you have one in con, you know, concern, let me know and I'll go by that house particular and do it first. If you have a neighbor who is not keeping their houses up like they should be, mostly just the pr pressure washing, uh, pulling weeds, trimming, things like that right there. Pressure washing is the biggest issue though. So if, you, if anybody has a neighbor who does not pressure wash their home and it's a problem for you, i uh, stop by and give it to Heather, and I'll go straight to their home. Jim. Hi, Rick. There's a couple of spots on Indian Summer Trail that do, do not have cones, but they still have some dangerous dips. I, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Can they turn the mic up? I can't hear a thing up here. Okay. Can you hear me now? Now I got you. <laughs> okay. On Indian Summer Trail, there's a couple places that do not have cones that still have dangerous dips. Are they gonna be addressed also? Yes, sir. Where the cones are, that's where they dug it up and there'll be paving. There's also about five or six places that there are some pretty good sized dips. And they dug up to find out why we have a dip there. There's no pipe in the ground there. There should be no reason for there to be a dip. But what we're finding is along the side of the roads, where your water sprinkler systems are, it looks like someone has come in to maybe spot power lines, water lines, and we're finding big holes about the size of a nickel, maybe a dime, poked into these holes, and that's causing a backwash underneath the road area. That's what's causing the majority of those big dips you see in the road right there. So yes, they are gonna dig those up. We didn't wanna dig them up until we were out here and prepared to put the dirt and pave them at the same time. So a lot of them will be addressed. If we don't address that one, then we'll address it again very shortly. Because we are starting a, once a year, they do a major road project in every community that a hometown owns. So uh, the company's called Bach, B-A-C-H, that will come out and they will spot the roads. You'll soon start seeing the roads all painted up with orange paint. So that's what they're getting ready to, uh, you'll notice that before you see them out here actually paving the potholes so they set aside money every year to do major road not major road construction but to keep the roads uh, acceptable rick so, yes did you say not say that the people that lease the homes from hometown america are responsible for the power washing and the trimming of the bushes yes they are when when you lease a home from us which we have 13 homes in here right now that are leased from hometown America. And when these 13 people sign the lease, they know that they are responsible for that home, just like you are. They're responsible for trimming trees, cutting grass, pulling weeds, pressure washing. They, it's, it's kind of like you. When you lease your lot, the whole lot's yours and everything on it is yours. When they lease the house, same thing with them. Well, those homes that we see that are totally green in bushes that need trimming that are leased homes, and nothing is being done about it. Okay, fair enough. Then I will uh, make a special point today to get out to all the leased homes and see if they are the ones, the culprits are not doing the work. Right, and we also live on Shadow Ridge, and there we have a common area behind our house which is never taken care of. And we have to call every time we need trees trimmed and things done in the back area. I understand. So uh, if you have an issue, come down there and we'll get Gary and we'll go over there and see if we can't do it. Keep in mind, there's 350 acres here, a lot of common areas around here. And as far as anything on the back area, yes, it needs to be done, but is it the first thing on our priority list? Absolutely not. So if you have a problem with it, please, I mean, it's in a good way. If it's a problem, uh, come down, we'll get Gary and take him over there and we'll put a schedule together and have him go over there and take care of it. 
Okay, well, that looks like it. Our people are here, so uh, thanks for everything. Uh, that's all I got.